Hey everybody, Mike here. Like the thumbnail said, is this concrete wet? I mean, how do how do I get away with pouring concrete that's so wet? Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove to you that the concrete I'm actually pouring here that looks like it's really wet is probably better than the concrete that you're pouring. And how how is that? Well, like I said, stick around a little bit later in the video. I'm going to show you how. But for you guys that pour a lot of concrete, I mean, what slump do you pour at? If we were to actually slump this out, it would probably be, you know, a seven or an eight for a slump. And that is really considered wet if you're just using water to get that type of slump. And what's wrong with pouring wet concrete? Well, let me know down in the comments. What do you think's wrong with pouring wet concrete? Also, do you do you consider this concrete wet? Let me know down in the comments too. And what slump do you usually pour at? Let's get that out of the way. So, what can pouring wet concrete do to your floor here? Well, it weakens. Anytime you increase the water-cement ratio to your concrete, it's going to weaken it a little bit. And the more you do it, the weaker it's going to get. The more likely it's going to shrink, the more likely it's going to crack. So it just can lead to a whole lot of problems down the road. Now what we're doing is we're pouring a, a garage floor here. we got a 3500 PSI mix with fiber mesh reinforcement. We have a little bit of air entrainment in it. We put a little bit of air in all our garages here in Maine because they all see a little bit of freeze and thaw. And the air helps with that. And that's the basic mix, what we're pouring. And that's what we use for most of our garage floors. Most of our house floors, we can use a 3,000 PSI concrete. And most of our exterior concrete is a 4,000 PSI mix. But you can see how, how fluid that concrete is coming out of the truck like that. It, it moves around real easy for us. And it's basically the same type of slump we use every single day. Unless we're pouring on something that has a lot of slope to it or maybe some stairs or something like that, you know, we'll use a low slump concrete. But for most of our floors, we can use a high slump concrete like this and get away with it. And our concrete isn't bad. It's probably actually better than yours. Now the garage we're pouring here is about a 40 by 26 garage. It actually does have a little bit of slope from the back to the front. We're going to power trowel finish this today nice and smooth, and we'll also get some saw cuts in it. We cut our floors every single day with a soft cut saw the same day that we power trowel them. Uh, you, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you've seen some of that in some of the other videos. If this is your first time watching me, then, then uh, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking on the thumbnail. We pour concrete every single day. I, I make a couple videos a week, try to get them up for you guys, trying to teach you guys about the, the trade of pouring concrete, especially flat work. We specialize in all different types of flat work. Now we got two loads coming here today. This is the first truck. We actually got a second job we're pouring that's pretty close by. That's why the first truck is doing more than half of this. We're going to finish it off with the second truck, and then we're going to take that second truck and go to the other job and do that one. And then we'll, a couple guys will come back here to finish this. But right now we're going to get this first truck emptied out, get him out of here so we can get this screeded and get the second truck backed in and get him in place and get him starting to mix. This job today, it was about an, an hour and 15 minutes away from the shop. We're actually down on the coast here in Maine. We pour a lot, a lot of concrete down that way which is about an hour from us. So we're, we're traveling quite a bit each day to do a lot of our floors. Let me know how much traveling you guys do. How far away from the shop do you guys travel for most of your work? I would say ours average between 45 minutes and an hour each day. So we snapped a chalk line around the inside of this using a laser. Right now Luke's using the laser to check the slope in that section right there and then he's going to adjust the receiver on it and then he's going to make a wet pad right in the middle so we can use that wet pad to screed off from and we'll do that two probably two to three times in this 40 feet to get our wet pads and then we'll have a nice even slope from the back to the front on this 
We don't do many garages in Maine with a center drain. Most of them slope out the doors. For whatever reason, people would rather have them slope than put a center drain in them, I guess. It's really not, well, I mean, once it's built, it's really not that big a deal. I wouldn't want one that's really flat. Then the, anything that drips off the car when it rains is just going to puddle under the car. But with a slope like this, it tends to want to work its way towards the doors and just, you know, you can work it out the door if you want. So there's one wet pad. Now he's going to have to adjust it because that floor slopes to get another wet pad in the middle. And then we'll get those struck with a 14 foot. We're going to use a 14 foot magnesium screed today and just hand screed this. Most of the floors that we pour that have a slope in them, we usually hand screed them. I guess we could power screed this if we wanted to, but we're just... It's just what we normally do. If it was flat, we use a power screed. Anything with a slope, we tend to want a hand screed. Now, when we hand screed stuff, we kick screed. So as you'll see Luke, as he's moving backwards, he kind of kicks the mud back into where his feet are and fills those holes. Now we're going to strike the pad in the center. So we'll have one big wet pad right in the center we can use to screed off from. You can see how easy that concrete is to screed too when it's real loose and fluid like that. So again, the question is, you know, how can I pour concrete that looks like it's so wet? And if you're not, I mean, why aren't you? Is this harder to pour like this? Is it easier to pour like this? I mean, for us, every, we pour every single day. This is just makes our life so much easier to pour concrete this loose. I know in a lot of my other videos that people have watched, they can't believe how wet the concrete is. Like, like how can I pour like this every day? And I guess they just don't know much about concrete, honestly. They really don't or they'd understand why. So I'm hoping that I can educate some of you here today on why I can pour concrete like this. And I got that coming right up here in a few minutes. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years. I've poured a lot of concrete. You know, if you think about, we pretty much pour concrete every single day. And if you've done that for 40 years straight, just how many yards of concrete do you think I've poured in 40 years? I've had days where I've poured up to a thousand yards in one day. I mean, you'll have 30 concrete trucks on the job at the same time. So between those big, big pours that I used to do and, and now these smaller ones, these residential ones, that adds up to a lot of concrete. And you don't just, I mean, you don't just get away with pouring wet, bad concrete every day and stay busy. So there's got to be a way that I can do it that keeps people calling me back every single day for more and more and more. You can see how easy that stuff screeds. And then not only does it screed easy, but the two guys, well, the guy and the girl raking behind us, I mean, it makes their job a lot easier too. Especially if they're low like they are right now. <laughs> but if you're low, if you're high, I mean, it just makes it a lot easier to screed this way. And then when you bow float, you'll see Luke's going to bow float here. You run that bow float down and back and you're done. Then you move over and, and do it again. So, so here's how we can do it. This is one of the water reducing admixtures we use from Master Builders. It's a mid-range water reducer. And what if you look here, the water reducer has, has a lower in-place concrete cost. So that means we can place concrete with less labor, highest strength at all ages, it enhances the concrete durability. It's uh, it's just the admixture we use most of the time. And there's a bunch of different companies that make this stuff. So if you're not using this stuff, I don't understand why you wouldn't use this. I mean, if it makes your life easier and it costs just a couple bucks extra a yard, how do you not use something like this? So Master Builders is one company that makes this stuff. And there's a bunch of other ones too that I'm gonna to show you here coming right up. But I mean, 
it gives you, it reduces the water content for a given level of workability. So if you want to pour eight inch slump, you don't have to use water to do that. You use this admixture to do that. And this is just a mid-range one here. You can use high-range ones too. So I'm going to show you some of these high-range ones coming right up. And we'll go over the benefits of that. So, so you'll have a little bit better understanding of what I do and, and how I use them every day. All right, so this is the one that we use at our concrete company. It's from Grace Products. It's called Adva 190 High-Range Water Reducing Admixture. Now, what the reason we use this is it produces a high slump concrete at very low dosages. So it doesn't take much of this to get a really high slump concrete. It, it gives us consistent air entrainment since we use the air entrainment a lot. The concrete actually finishes easier with this stuff. So it finishes easily without stickiness, spotty set, or tearing. Now it says right here, it produces concrete with extremely workable characteristics referred to as a high slump. It allows the concrete to be produced with a very low water cement ratio for high strength. So we're getting a really high strength concrete that's really flowable, which most of you guys look at as wet. So it's, it's either, okay, if you don't know much about this stuff, then you look at it as that's concrete's wet. But if you know what you're doing, like we do, if you pour every day, then you look at it as flowable. You don't talk about it as wet. So it's a highly flowable concrete that's also really strong. And that's why we use this stuff right here. So here's another company you may have heard of, Sika. They make a high-range water reducer. Um, again, higher ultimate strengths, allowing for greater engineering design and flexibility reducing water cement ratios to produce a more durable, dense concrete. Uh, just, it's a concrete admixture that gives you better concrete. So all these, all these chemical admixture companies make this stuff. Now, if your concrete company doesn't have this, then just ask them to get it for you. I guess maybe you could buy some direct, I don't know, and put it in right on the job. But we, the concrete company we use is just has it right there and we just ask for it and they put it in. And we can ask for it as a mid-range if we want, or we can ask for it as a high range if we want to pour like an eight slump like right here. Um, that's basically it as far as that. Now there's one more company I want to show you real quick that makes it. And maybe if, if you can't get it from one of these three, you can get it from this next one right here. So here's Euclid Chemical Company. Maybe you've heard of them. They, they make a bunch of different types. All these companies make different types. So here's Yukon 537. Produces flowing concrete with controlled delay of slump loss and workability. Um, greatly reduces water requirements. Reduces segregation and bleeding. Reduces cracking and permeability of hardened concrete. So here's another one, Yukon 1037. It just depends what, you, what you're what you doing. You, you can ask for any of these if you want. Um, produces low water content and low water uh, cement ratios, allowing for higher strengths. I think you get it by now. This stuff's just much better for your concrete. So if you're pouring concrete floors and you want to pour it a little bit wetter, as you guys say, um, or flowable, then this is the stuff you want to be using, just like we do every single day. That's it, guys. This is this is what you should be using. So when you look at a concrete floor like this and you're watching me pour concrete that moves around really, really easily, we're not struggling with, we're not killing ourselves pouring because we know we have to do it every day. This is what the types of admixtures we're using in our concrete. And, you know, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And maybe some of you are. Let me know if you guys, the you guys that are using these in your concrete and you're pouring a little bit higher slump concrete like we are, let me know down in the comments. That would be great to know if I'm not the only one that's using this stuff. I mean, why would you pour a four or a five inch slump concrete and kill yourself on a floor like this versus pouring a seven or eight and probably even have better, stronger concrete that's less likely to crack? Uh, I just, I, I would like to hear from just one of you where that would make more sense. And uh, we can debate on it down in the comments, I guess, if you think, if you think your concrete's a little bit better than mine. But this is what we do for a living. I mean, we're, 
We're going to work for other people who are going to pay us money. We're going to try to give them the best product that we possibly can. And that comes down to the concrete company's product and then our product, which is installing it. So we, we both have to do a good job at what we do if we want to keep working, keep being busy, and get paid. And I don't know about you, but if you're not busy there, if you're not very busy right now, then you need a little bit better marketing program. <laughs> Let me know. I could help you out with that too down in the comments. Or, you know, maybe you're just not as good as you could be and you need to you need to learn a little bit more about how to do things in the concrete business to get better at it so you get more referrals. So we're getting down to this last bay. You can see the, the first truck, how we both loaded that, how smooth that is, how easy it is to both float. The second truck's going to be the same way. And that's basically how we pour our concrete floors every single day. Sometimes we'll do a couple in a day. Sometimes we'll do one. And then we'll go set up. But if you want to learn more about concrete stuff, guys, if you really want to learn, I mean, from someone who's been doing it for 40 years, then I would definitely join the Concrete Underground. That's my private training. That There's a link for that down below. You can check that out for yourself. You can uh, email me if you want and talk about it, but I'm in there to help you the best I can. That's why I put out all these videos is try to help you guys out. I don't know everything about concrete. I'll, I'll admit that I don't know everything and I've been doing it for 40 years. But I do know quite a bit. I do know what I know. I know what I've learned. And I can pass that on to others and hopefully help you guys get better at it too. So again, guys, thanks for watching this. I appreciate it. Uh, watch till the end. If, you, if you're not a subscriber, please go down there and hit subscribe now. Like it, share it, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>